It is time for us to turn it over to Ellen. Now, Ellen has prepared herself to share with you what is the one word, why can it change my life, why can it change my year, and let's give it over to Ellen Lewis. Hey there, everybody. Okay, so I want to encourage you while I'm talking tonight, don't take notes. I know that sounds crazy. It's the opposite of what we normally tell you, but don't take notes. And here's why, um, because we are going to post this and it's a workbook for your one word action plan, okay? And it's gonna cover how to find your word and all that stuff. It's very simple. When I say workbook, don't get intimidated. There's not a lot of words on these pages, a lot of space for you to be able to like think through your word. But I encourage you just to kind of like drink in what I'm saying and just really think about it. Um, so this comes from this book here and it's um, one word and it's by um, three different authors and they collaborated on this years ago. It's a super easy and simple read. You literally can read all the key points in this book within 45 minutes and I'm not a quick reader either, okay? Um, but there's a lot of white space and um, so it's nice to have. So if you, if you want to invest in yourself and in your business, I highly recommend grabbing this book because you'll revisit it every single year and just kind of when you're trying to get into that space to figure out what your word is. So years ago, um, Pam brought this training to us because we always do our pillowcases, right? And this doesn't take the place of the pillowcase, but um, she, you know, she brought this training to us and it's, it's when you narrow down what it is, what your purpose for the year is into one word, that word becomes trigger, right? So anytime you see that word, it should, if this, if you, if you truly is the right word for you, it should trigger you, right? Anytime you hear a song with that word, anytime you read that word, anytime somebody even says it in a sentence, it's so important when you're in this thinking process to really think long and hard about what you want your word to be. And so sometimes it comes to you very quickly and sometimes it takes a little bit longer. All right, so words are powerful. They have the power to in inspire, encourage, appreciate, heal, and turn the impossible into the possible. And, and so when you're finding your word, sometimes, you know, a lot of times when you first do this, you want your word to be the super awesome, powerful word, like, like, um, excellence or whatever, right? You want it to be this really awesome, powerful word. Um, and it might be, um, but I remember the first time I did this, my word was details, okay? So there's nothing like sexy or powerful about the word details, right? Um, and I kept going, oh man, and everybody's coming up with these really killer words. And I'm like, details, like what? Well, I have a tendency to skim over the details. I, I get in a hurry and I just kind of like glaze over things. And that year, I really took that to heart and I paid more attention to the little things that were important in making a big impact in my business, right? So as you're going through this, um, if a word comes to you and you're just like, that's such a weird word, don't, don't shy away from it, just store it away. And then through this process, you'll figure out if it's the right one. So similar to buying a new car and suddenly seeing that same model everywhere you go, right? I'm sure that happens to you, um, you know, everywhere you go, the same color even, right? Um, you'll begin to see your word everywhere. You'll notice it on signs. You'll notice it in books, like all over the place. It's crazy. Uh, uh, like fortune cookies. That's happened to Pam. It happened to me. I was like, what is happening right now? Right? So it's crazy how it just kind of like comes in front of you. So one word gives you the clarity and focus for challenges of a busy, stressful world. Just like um, light focus becomes a laser and cut through steel, a light focus with one word becomes a force that can cut through the status quo. Um, and it's really important to share that word with your um, sort of your, your inner circle, right? Your close friends and family um, and, and this group of people that maybe you call, you know, maybe they're your closest people, the people that you tell your best and your worst news to, right? These are the people that are going to help hold you accountable to that. So um, one word is an easy way um, it's a way uh, into every aspect of your life. The concept will have a powerful impact on the six dimensions of your life, spiritual, physical, emotional, relational, uh, mental, and financial. 
right? And so, and it is, it's amazing when you start kind of examining your word, you see all the, the ways it affects in all these different categories in your life, right? So um, one word changes everything and how you figure out your one word. And this is what's going to be in these worksheets that we're going to post for you, right? It says that it's three steps. The first one is prepare your heart by looking in, right? The second step is discover your word by looking up, okay? And the third is live your word by looking out. All right, so... Let's go into this really briefly. All right. So we're going to talk about preparing your heart and that's looking in when you're failing to prepare your prepare, when you're failing to prepare, you're preparing to fail. Right. So, um, seven habits of highly effective people, right. One of them is sharpen your saw. Okay. If you haven't read that book, you need to read it, get it on audible, like listen to it, read it all the time. It's such a phenomenal book for life and business and everything. So sharpen your saw. That's what you're doing. When you take the time to really think about this word and think about what you believe for your vision, for your purpose for this year, it will pay you tenfold. Like it, it, it's, it's so powerful and it's important to cut through the busyness of life and take this time to sit down and, and do that because busyness is a disease that's really robbing us of our life and our happiness, right? <laughs> And so it's important to break that pattern so that you can focus on this. I'm going to mute somebody really quick. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. So it has been said that busyness makes us stop caring about the things that we care about. And if you've ever been very busy or maybe a period of your life where you're really hectic and busy, you can relate to that as much as maybe you don't want to admit it, you can relate to that. Um, because you get so busy that you're missing all the important things that, that are really important to you because you're too busy doing all the other things. Um, and some people are addicted to busyness, right? And that's something to look at too in yourself. Um, activity does not mean achievement. If you're running a, the rat race, you're in the wrong race. All right. If it's because a lot of times that rat race, that's a, a hamster wheel, right? That's not a road or a path leading to your purpose, your end game, your big goal, the big picture, right? So you want to make the investment. The first and foremost step of the one word process is to prepare your heart. This means you need to escape from the busyness of life. Take time to get your heart ready and looking, look inward. The truth is um, you sow what you reap. What you invest in this process, you'll receive in return. And so it, you really need to unplug. Even if like, I love to drive, okay? Um, I don't like to run errands. I don't, like, I don't like to run my kids all over the place, right? But really driving, one of the things I miss about Rally is my drive to Rally. I live 45 minutes away from the studio. And that was my time to just get in. Sometimes I listen to music and sometimes I listen to books. And sometimes I, I, I didn't talk on the phone usually on my way there because I needed to just shift out of the mom and the wife and the, all of the hats I wear to get into the mode, right? And so I loved that time in the car to be able to think. And so, so that is a perfect unplug time, right? Maybe you're sitting in a parking lot outside of your, your child's um, dance class, right? Um, that's a good place to unplug. So there are places that you can unplug. And sometimes it might mean just stay up 20 minutes later after everybody's in bed just to think or wake up 20 minutes earlier. You can find the time and it's worth it. All right. So while you're unplugged, you want to ask three things. You want to ask, what do I need? What is necessary? What is, what is it necessarily about what you want, but rather and, but rather truly what you need, right? And what areas in your life do you need to change the most? All right. So the second one is what's in my way? What's preventing me from getting what it is that I need in these areas in my life? And the third question you want to ask is what needs to go? Sometimes we're held hostage by a past mistake. And I will be completely honest with you. I absolutely am that person. I beat myself up about things that I said, misunderstandings, or even possible misunderstandings that I'm just like, why would I say that? Like, that was so 
weird and bizarre and, you know, and then beat myself up about things like that. Those are the small things that you can hold on to um, that are past mistakes or pain. Sometimes they're bigger things. For years, Eric and I beat ourselves up about our failed business because we felt like we failed. And it was a combination of things. We weren't failures. The business failed. And it happens. If you're an entrepreneur, if you own a business, there are times that you falter and stumble. And it's and sometimes it's not your fault. Sometimes it is. But you learn and you move on. And so this is one of the most important things. What is it that you need to let go that is holding you back from the possibilities? And so this is a time to be really honest with yourself about that. All right. So the second one is to look up. All right. So there is a word that is meant for each one of us, a word based on where we are in our lives and where God wants us to be. Okay. And the process of looking up is meant to be peaceful, not stressful, right? The first part might be a little stressful because you might be scratching at some old wounds, right? But this part is supposed to be peaceful, right? This is where you're just coming into a realization of why you're here because we're all here to serve a bigger purpose, right? And this is where you really come in touch with that by looking up, by praying, by um, but whatever it is that you believe in, by looking to that higher power, right? And so you're filled with hope and not despair and fueled by faith and not fear. So you get a God word, not just a good word, right? I loved that. When I read that the first time, I was like, oh my God, I love that, right? Because God uses all means to communicate with us. And you never know when or where or how your word's going to be revealed to you. So you got to pay attention, right? God could reveal your word while you're reading an inspirational book, a devotional, or the Bible, maybe taking a walk in nature, maybe watching your child play, grandchild, or even just an animal, right? You know, um, we, can't, we can't tell you in what way your word's going to be revealed to you, um, but if you prepare your heart and ask for God to, to send that word to you with well, a word that's meant for you, and you listen to that. It, it, he'll find the best word for you, for you to be able to share. All right. So the last part is to look out. All right. So when your word comes to you, it may come in the form of a character trait, a discipline, a person, a, a spiritual focus, an attribute or a value, right? It could be all these different types of words. So don't be afraid of, like I said, if your word is weird, like details when everybody else is like strong and strength and all these really cool words and mine's like super lame and that's okay. <laughs> all right. So um, some, some examples are like patience and kindness um, rest. I've had somebody, uh, I remember their word was, um, was, was, uh, peace. You know, it was like calm. I remember somebody uh, on the team, their word was calm one year, you know, and, and intimacy, discipline, overcomer, right? And then you want to live it out. Once you discover your word, that the word that's meant for you, um, it's time to live it out. And as the saying goes, this is where the rubber meets the road, right? You want to keep your word in front and center, right? Everybody has heard out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> Everyone in the world has heard that saying. And if you haven't, I am shocked because everybody at some point is out of sight, out of mind, right? I remember my dad saying that to me, right? My mom saying that to me. I remember this, right? And so you want to post it in a prominent place that's in your house, right? Where you see it regularly. Um, what gets your attention, your focus, and and where your fo what you focus on gets done, right? Absolutely what you focus on gets done. So you want it front and center. And so you can write it down on a post-it note in prominent places all over the place, right? I've had post-it notes on my mirrors and on my walls before um, for things that I really were really important to me. And I just wanted, I have right here, I have like a little quote that somebody gave me and it just meant so much to me. And I just have it sitting right here on my desk, right? And so, um, so create a screensaver with your word. What a great thing to do, right? Okay. All the kids, right. As soon as they're a couple, you know, Oh, put my pic on your screen. Right. So do this with your word. This is your coupling for the year. <laughs> put it on there. Right. It's so easy to change too. All right. Paint your word on a sign and hang it somewhere. Take a picture of your word and save it on your phone. Right. 
keep a journal and write down insights and lessons and stuff that you learn every week. Um, start a one word dinner discussion with your family and talk about your various words. Talk about what your word is and ask them about what they think theirs might be. Create a weekly focal point um, or a challenge every Monday uh, and look at those six dimensions and see how your word's fitting into that. Um, look for sayings and quotes that encompass that word. Pick a song that reminds you of your word. A lot of times these words are in songs. I mean, there's songs for everything, right? Um, write a poem or a prayer. Uh, create a document on your computer that collects all one word things, right? So you could go to Pinterest and have a Pinterest board that is all things that are associated with that word for you. Um, and, uh, and, and you want to make sure to share that with the people that matter to you most so that they can bring you back. So if you're kind of starting to spiral, they're like, hey, hey, Ellen, details, right? Details, you know, you're skimming, you're missing things. Go back to that. All right, so don't just check the box, uh, experience the journey, right? So this is not something on your to-do list. We're giving you worksheets, okay? I know worksheets, but I'm telling you, they're really not, the, they're, they're very easy. And it just covers what I just said, right? And so, so you want to take the time to do this and experience it. You can sit there and answer the questions and be like, okay, I did that, I did that. Okay, my word is, is super, you know, whatever it is, you know? But it's important to take that time to do that. All right, you don't win or lose with your one word. It's what you experience throughout the year and that is what is meant for you. And once you've used a word, don't repeat it the following year. Even if you don't make the progress that you're hoping to make with that word, don't repeat it. You know, you could find a similar word, right? But clearly that wasn't the right word for you, right? And so don't go back down, down that road. Don't repeat it. You can find something similar, but, you know, move forward with this. Um, so I hope that that helps and I hope that you all decide um, what your word is. My word for this year is connect. Again, not a super, super sexy word, but it's the word that, I, that is totally for me and it came to me very fast and I was just like, yes, I'm connecting with my soul. I'm connecting with my business. I'm connecting with my family and that was something I'd already been journaling about and thinking about for this new year and so I was like, that's the perfect word for me. So um, good luck finding your words. And I can't wait for everybody to post. And you can go to um, their website, I think is getoneword.com. And you can actually print up, they have like little things and you just like put your word in there. And then it's like a picture of a mountain. So they have things, signs that you can make right on their website, or you can doodle or do whatever it is you want to do, but, or just put it on a post-it note. Nobody cares. Just keep it in front of you.